Bora TV. The world is thinking. It's become a kind of competition to see how many friends uh, you can have on your Facebook. So it's not uncommon for some people to claim three, five hundred friends, even a thousand, actually. Um, I, I suggest that if you do actually claim that, any of you, probably you don't know most of these people. They're just voyeurs into your life. And you could probably, with advantage, do without some of them. Uh, and the question is, why is that the case? The simple answer is, it's Dunbar's number. And I thank whoever created that acronym. I have no idea who did it. It just appeared out of the blue on the internet. Wonderful thing, the internet. <laughs> and it, it sort of uh, took off. Um, but there we are. And that number is about 150. There's a lot of variation around that, um, to, be, to be fair. Uh, and I, I hesitate to say where that variation lies. Some of it's due to gender differences. <laughs> and I won't tell you which way it goes for fear of offending half the audience. Right. But w why is it limited at 150? Uh, the, the answer is twofold, actually. Partly, it's a cognitive challenge just to keep track of more people. I'll say a bit more about that I I I in a minute. The other side of it is, is it's just a, a time budgeting problem. You just don't have time in, the, in everyday life to invest in each of those people uh, to the extent where you can have a real relationship with them. We've come to see, well, actually, we've learned two things out of all this work we've been doing over the last maybe five years on these kind of things. One is we have no idea what relationships are. Probably some of you can tell us. We certainly don't know, and we come to the conclusion that none of the kind of grand spectrum of social psychology and so on, which has spent a lot of time looking at this, actually know either. And we think it's probably because friendships in this sense, relationships in general, are emotional things. So we know, when, we know what we mean by a relationship when we see it. So if you see two people in a relationship, or when you have a relationship, you know you have one. But we can't kind of verbalize it. We can't put it into words to say what it is. And I think, actually, that's why poets get such um, uh, uh, recognition by us generally, because they, they just have that skill to be able to put into words these kind of, if you like, right brain emotional feelings, which we find very difficult to actually express. So it, you know, we, we can't kind of get it up into our conscious mind and our language left side of the brain and sort of uh, say something about the quality and, uh, of the relationship you have. So we have no way of comparing relationships in the end. That's a real problem from our point of view because we can't really compare quality of relationship against the outcome. Do certain kinds of relationships last longer uh, and so on? We can't even do it between different species. So lots and lots of species have um, uh, monogamous pair-bonded mating systems, but we don't know how they compare or whether they're similar to our pair-bonded romantic relationships and so on. Okay. so. That kind of cognitive side of it is sort of offset by the fact that you have to invest in relationships. You have to do stuff with people in order to build a relationship with them. And it seems as though the amount of time you need to invest uh, is kind of proportional to the quality of the relationship. Or should I say the quality of the relationship is proportional to the amount of time you spend doing stuff with people. So if you look at the pattern of your relationships, what, in this 150, as it were, what you'll find is that it actually consists of a series of layers a bit like this ripples on a pond. If you drop a pebble in the pond, if you're the pebble, you can imagine the layers, the ripples going out are the layers of your relationships. And as you go out, you include more people, but you're including relationships at a lower quality. And that ties up very closely with the amount of time you spend with those people. So the amount of time you spend with this inner core of about five, there's another curious feature of it, uh, is the, the layers scale in a very, very consistent pattern. So they, they, they occur at 5, 15, 50, 150. Then we know out beyond that there's a 500 and a 1500. And I might tell you as we're in, in, in the hall of, of the arts here, if I can borrow that bit for the moment, Plato got the next number out. He said the ideal democracy size is 5,300. That was 350 years ago. Sorry, 350 BC. Rather. You know, we've learned nothing. <laughs> 